during your last year, you were, I'm assuming you're in the halfway house at this point. Yes. Because you're able to work during the day and then you had to go back. So you did yes. be in that halfway house. How long have you been home? Is, is, is it four years now? It'll be four years in October. Okay. Let's talk about that. And this is why I wanted to get you on this show. We took the long way to get there, but it's important for our audience to know just how far you have come. How many businesses have you started successfully since you've been home? Um, four. Four Name successfully. Them. Um, I started out, I got the barbershop and beauty salon. Still have it. Um, I won yeah, I started, that was my first business. I'm, I mean, I, I'll be there after I finish this interview to cut some hair. Okay. Um, I, after I worked with a guy, he had the biggest barbershop in Milwaukee. I watched him for a year. I watched his moves. I, I learned, I sponged up as much of the business side of this, this business as I could from him. And then I struck out on my own and I started my own a year after being released. And after about three to six months of that shop being open, one of the guys that I was cutting, one of my clients, he told me he had bought a truck and the type of money he was making with the truck. So I'm frugal with my money. I started out making $7.25 an hour when I was on work release and I came home with $7,500. So that's $7.25 when people start talking about, man, that's not enough money. I say, hey man, I, I, I was making $7.25 and I was paying room and board and transportation out of that $7.25. So, once again, I had money put up that I wasn't spending when he told me about the trucking business. By the time he came for his next haircut, I had bought me a truck. So with that being said, I was asking him, man, how you get in this trucking game? He gave me a little few nuggets because people real guarded with that information because <laughs> they think you're in competition, man. So I took the little nuggets he gave me, found my lane. Now today I got five trucks. I started out with one. Uh, two and a half years ago, now I got five. We rolling in my third business, which was uh, motivational speaking. I started the speaking business because um, just naturally. I was part of youth awareness programs and scare straight programs in prison. So when I got out, people were asking questions. They were asking questions about, how did you start these businesses? You only been home two years. You got two businesses. I never been to prison. I don't have one business. So I was speaking, man. I ended up speaking with the Milwaukee Bucks basketball team, going back into the prisons. I ended up going to the governor's mansion, speaking about entrepreneurship and business and coming back from adversity, um, which led to me writing a book called The Answers. And it was because of those questions why I labeled it and titled it The Answers, because I'm just answering the questions that's been asked that people can use. I didn't want to write an autobiography. I just wanted to give some people an outline of what I've done and the things that they can use and apply to their situation and it'll work just as well. And the last business, which is the fourth business, um, I wear a beard, man. The beard thing is growing in this country. So I've been wearing a beard a little over five years now, man, and I work in a barbershop. So I started my own beard products. Products with beards and soon to be on the the bald heads for everybody that shaved their heads, man. So I formulated what I knew from cosmetology was good for the beard and was good for the skin underneath the beard. And I launched my own beard um, product. It's been doing well, man. And that was the fourth business. And that, that was recent. That's the most recent. And I, I'm building that out right now. Okay, because I want to I, I, I want to make sure we send as much business your way as humanly possible. What is the name of your beard grooming company? Um, the name of the beard uh, products that I'm coming out with and it's out with right now is called King Edward Beard Oil, and I named it King Edward Beard Oil was because people think when they think a king or even queen, they think a ruler over people. But I wanted to say my story is being the king of your dreams in your life, being the king or queen of the adversity and challenges in your life, and being just a king or queen in your community, somebody that walks with some confidence that other people that's not as confident as you can draw off of. Because I used other people's story to build myself up. I used their stories. 
I, I read as many people that overcame the odds and I took their story. So my story is not even mine. It belongs to somebody else. It's not my story at all. Ed, before we wrap this up, I got a few more questions for you and you got me so inspired right now. So everything that I wanted this interview to be, you have over delivered on your side. So I thank you so much for your candor and your openness while we are speaking, um, because I'm so inspired by hearing all of the positive work that you've done. <laughs> you've only been home for going on four years. There's people who have never been in your situation and have yet to start their first business. And even if they want to start it, they're too afraid to go ahead and just bet on themselves. So I hope once they hear this, if you could do it, it ain't nobody on planet earth who can. Um, what separates you? Because I don't want people to look at you as you are an anomaly. You're something, a one in a million. You're a lottery ticket because you're not. You are everybody that we have ever known growing up in the hood. Yep. But for some reason, you have come out and you've been able to change your life and you're excelling. If somebody's watching this, what, what makes you different? How have you come out? How have you been able to come out not get caught up back in the stuff that you was doing and more important create four successful businesses i think that my um my difference as sitting in prison and talking to people i think it's the mindset uh, we have to change our minds before we change our lives because once you change your mind your life gonna change right along with that mindset change and i think like um, I tell people to dream again. Like when we were seven, and eight years old and we was on the playground and we could be whoever and whatever we wanted to be. But then somewhere, life, society, family, friends start to chip away at those dreams. By the time you're 12, those dreams are, oh, I can't be Michael Jordan. I can't be uh, successful. Oh, well, I might as well be a carpenter. I might as well be this. And then by the time you're 17 or 18, you like, oh, man, if I just get a job at Walmart, that might just be cool, man. Just keep chipping away at that seven, eight, nine-year-old kid that by the time they're 17, 18, 19, 20, they're just settling for something because they don't have the same enthusiasm and zeal for their dreams that they had because life has broken them down. So when I got my dreams back sitting in prison, I heard people tell me, man, your PO ain't going to let you do this. Your baby mama going to be on you, man. Society ain't having that, man. So I knew then, I said, man, you got to change that thinking. That thinking is the number one obstacle in your life right now, not the people. It's your own things that you're telling yourself that's hurting you more than anything. If you get out your own way, you'll be able to leap above all of these other things that you think that's in your way. So once I start telling myself I can do it, I have obstacles every day. I have things that I have to overcome. But they ain't as, like, like the pandemic. I did 20 years in prison and everybody got locked down. So everybody was locked down and they was hysterical. I was like telling my daughter, I said, sweetheart, daddy just locked in a better cell this time. <laughs> I can handle this. <laughs> I can handle this. So once again, being prepared for the obstacles and having the right mindset. Having that mindset that you can overcome the obstacles. But if you keep telling yourself, something over and over and over. I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. You can't do it, you can't do it. As a man thinker, you know, if, if you ain't thinking it, you can't, you can't do it, you can't do it, man. So that's the one nugget, along with anything else that I've been able to say today, man, is change them thoughts and them thoughts will change your life. Because right now, man, I, everything I think about, I go for it. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.